thevintagerogshop.com. Okay, nice large green image. Uh, they put a bit of overlay so I can see the text pretty clearly. And this is on a slider, so they're showing the range of different things that they have, which is nice. And everything seems to be linking to the right thing. Nice. Um, the vintage rug shop. It looks like they don't have a logo. They just have text as a logo. So maybe that is a logo. Um, it feels like a Shopify theme I've seen before. It's also good. I like these doors. I think this is this brand does a very great job of capturing or make, giving you that luxury feel. This might be a, a secret tip for you guys. If you want to make a site look more luxury, just make the fonts really small and make certain things hard to read. I noticed this is stuff like Gucci does. They always have like their font size at font 12. Um, so that's a little tip you might want to use because, yeah, you can see this is kind of hard to read a bit, but it does gives you that luxury feel a little bit. Seamlessly transition between your home, seasons, accents, fresh hues, uh, textured materials, and layered moments. Nice. And they've got some image and text, and this is nicely positioned. Shop art. I really like this. This is very clean. Animations as well. This image took a long time to load, but it's fine. Um, nice. So you can kind of see the contrast to this homepage versus the old homepage. Uh, this one is really long. It gives you a lot to look at. Because, uh, yeah, sometimes if you're a user like me and you don't really have a high buying intent, for example, you just want to see what the store has to show. Um, so you want to see if there's something that particularly interests you. For example, this vase looks interesting. Might click into it. Um, but as you keep on showing more and more products, you get to show people more of what you guys have to offer. So I'd definitely say a longer homepage is definitely better than a shorter one, especially if you have a lot of products. Um, if you have like, you know, one or two products that you're really trying to sell on, um, then maybe you don't need one as long. But if you've got a load of different products and collections, it's definitely good to have a good uh, homepage uh, to look through things. So uh, let's go to the collection page. That is a huge image. Um, Looks like they've pulled it off though. Best seller badges rate. Um, I would probably make that a bit of a better color, but with the minimal color scheme, I think um, they most likely wanted it like that. Second image on hover is a great effect to have. So I can see more about the products without having to click on them. It would be nice to have like a slight transition in between them. Um, I think that would be really cool. So like a fade in, fade out. Um, animation would be really cool as you're scrolling through the store. Um, nice. Okay, so full screen product page. I also have mixed thought, thoughts on full screen product pages. Um, sometimes I feel like it's good to have a container instead of a, a full screen. Um, but then I look at other big e-commerce sites, like for example, Amazon. Um, if I go to Amazon, and we click on a random product. I was really trying to buy one of these, by the way. Um, that's why it's showing up here. But you'll see it's kind of giving you a more full screen experience, almost. It looks like it's got a max width about here-ish, if you can see my cursor. Um, but yeah, it's, it gives you a more full screen experience. And you've got like three columns and a lot to look at. Um, whereas with this brand, I feel like it's kind of giving you a bit too much of a full screen. I don't think there's as much information here. Also, there's a lot of white space at the top here, um, which isn't too bad on desktop, but let's see if they've slimmed it down a bit on mobile. I'll refresh. Okay. So yeah, they've slimmed it down on mobile. I think it would be, um, could slim, be slimmed down a little bit further. Uh, a still life sketch. I'm not quite sure what's going on with all the sliders today. All the sliders are just not working. Um, still life sketch. I have no idea what that is. Um, and I agree to the terms and conditions. Is this necessary to have? Is probably what I would ask this brand. Did people need to tick this terms and conditions? um okay possibly i guess if it's an expensive product you want to minimize return so you want to make sure people have definitely read things so maybe that's some feedback that they've taken on 
over time to avoid returns, uh, which I guess is a good thing. Apart from that, I would definitely um, say there's no need to add an extra step for people uh, to add to cart. So yeah, also a hover effect on the add to cart would be nice because this kind of color looks like the grayed out color. You know, like when something's sold out and it looks grayed out and the color goes grayed out, this kind of looks like that color. So maybe it doesn't push people to buy as much. I would probably use a solid black there and then have like a hover effect to make it white so people know it's clickable. Um, a super small quantity selectors. I'm not sure if anyone uses these. Those are very small. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, apart from that, I think this store definitely has like a style that it wants to um, go for. Okay, so the it is grayed out until you actually check these terms and conditions. So that makes sense. And then it does have a further effect. Okay. So yeah, if I was a user, I'd probably be clicking through this like I just did, thinking, why is it not working? Um, so yeah, another thing heat maps can tell you uh, a great deal. So if lots of people are clicking to add to cart, um, well, I guess that's the main function of the page, but maybe you can just kind of see um, oh, they were clicking this, but it wasn't working. So a couple of changes I'd make is maybe you have the text clickable as well. So if they click on this, I agree part, like where I'm clicking right now, it also ticks the box. And the other change I'd make is if it's possible to have the terms and conditions as pop out. So right now, when you click on it, it will take you to the page. But if you could have this information as a pop out on the screen, so when you click this, a modal pops out with the information. So at least they stay on the product page. I think that would definitely be useful. Um, and then people can quickly just agree to this instead of, you know, maybe going here, having to spend a lot of time here and then realizing, oh, how do I get back to the original product I wanted and maybe getting lost, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, let's actually add this to cart. They've got a slide out card. It's kind of hard to see that next to the rest of the page. Um, that's the menu, that's the cart. But let's quickly check out and move on. I don't think I've... Um, okay, so these guys are using a cart page, which is okay. Um, but like I said, I'd definitely recommend to have a side cart. And then when you press, you see a lot of brands do this. When you press checkout, it takes you to the cart page. I'm not sure if this is something to do with like a Facebook event tracking something. It might be to do with that and they need to... Um, use the cart page but i'd say you really don't need to for example this upsell if you use some custom code you could have this in the cart itself and just save that extra step of people having to cart because for example i was ready to actually check out and go and see the checkout and pay but now you've just brought me over here um so yeah it depends how important the upsell is to you and if the upsell is important you can just put it in the cart especially on mobile because people will just see what the cart looks like um and also update cart. It looks like if you add quantity. So yeah, I feel like these guys might be using an old Shopify theme. If you move over to a Shopify 2.0 theme, um, you'll be able to, when somebody presses this uh, new quantity, it will refresh on the screen instead of having to use the update cart. Again, it's just making things as easy for the user as possible. And also a lot of other people are using it. So you don't want them to come to your site and you don't have it. Um, so yeah, apart from that, let's actually hit checkout and it should take us to the normal Shopify checkout. Nice. So I can see you still got a blue button here. So if you guys just wanted to change the checkout buttons in Shopify, this is super easy to do. Um, I would definitely recommend keeping even this continue to shipping and the other buttons on brand as well just so people get the full experience. Cool. Um, so that is the Vintage Rug Shop.